Welcome! This series of tutorials aims to inform diagnostic laboratories about the new regulation on in vitro diagnostic medical devices, the IVDR. Please note that the implementation of the IVDR is an ongoing process and many aspects remain to be clarified. This means that new information will become available continuously. Please visit the ESLO website for more information. 1. Definitions, Urgency and Transition IVDD to IVDR The European Union Regulation on In Vitro Diagnostic Medical Devices, or in short, the IVDR, is a new EU legislation that will regulate in vitro diagnostic medical devices. In vitro diagnostic medical devices are also referred to as in vitro diagnostics, IVDs, or just as devices. The term IVD is defined in the IVDR as follows. Any reagent, reagent product, calibrator, control material, kit, instrument, apparatus, piece of equipment, software, or system that is used for in vitro examination of specimens derived from the human body, for example, for diagnosis of a disease or condition, for disease monitoring, for guiding treatment, or to look at the predisposition for a disease. So even though IVDs are often referred to as diagnostic tests or diagnostic assays, the term covers a broader range of diagnostic products. Examples are a kit for genetic analysis, an antibody panel for flow cytometry, a tube to collect blood from a patient, a flow cytometer, or analysis software. All of these devices are regulated by the IVDR. Of course, if these products are not meant for diagnostic use, but only for research, they are not IVDs. So, what does it mean for an IVD to be regulated by the old directive, the IVDD, or by the IVDR? Both describe the requirements that need to be fulfilled to bring an IVD to the EU market. For example, the manufacturer needs to work under an appropriate quality management system, it needs to develop IVDs according to a documented development process, it needs to provide information about the product, the label and instructions for use. It needs to present evidence that the IVD performs as intended, etc. To show that all the applicable requirements have been fulfilled, the manufacturer needs to document all of this. Depending on their group or class, IVDs are self-certified or certified by a notified body. For some IVDs, manufacturers can self-declare that they fulfill all requirements, self-certification. For other IVDs, the documentation needs to be assessed and approved by an independent third party called a notified body in a process called conformity assessment. The legislation not only dictates the requirements for the conformity assessment process, but also for notified bodies to become accredited and be allowed to perform such assessments. After certification, IVDs can be sold in the EU and used by diagnostic laboratories. The IVDR also dictates the rules for importers and distributors of IVDs. Finally, all national competent authorities, often ministries of health, have the task of enforcement of the legislation to check whether manufacturers, notified bodies, and others comply with the requirements. And these competent authorities, together with the European Commission, are responsible for the implementation of the IVDR. All of this is also described in the legislation. What was the urgency to adopt this new regulation? On the left, you can see the first page of the IVDR. On the first pages, the intentions of the regulation are made clear. This part is called the preambles. The central aim of the IVDR is to ensure a high level of safety and health. So, safe devices 
that perform as intended. It does so by strengthening the requirements for IVDs and to clarify them by describing them in more detail. In other words, rules are reinforced for important elements of the IVDR, such as classification of IVDs, performance evaluation and presentation of evidence, accreditation of notified bodies, conformity assessment by notified bodies, vigilance and market surveillance, which is enforcement by the competent authorities. Furthermore, the old legislation of the EU, not a regulation but a directive, has been in place since 1998. Since then, there have been major developments in our technical and medical knowledge and abilities. Think for example of genetic testing and companion diagnostics. The IVDR deals with this, as well as with better alignment with international guidelines. Finally, there were a couple of scandals around medical devices in the previous two decades, which of course contributed to the urgency to act. In the current period, from 2017 to 2022, we're in a transition from the old IVD directive, the IVDD, to the new IVD regulation, the IVDR. The IVDD was not really an issue for diagnostic labs, as it only regulated CE IVDs the in vitro diagnostic medical devices sold by IVD manufacturers. CE refers to the CE mark, which is commonly seen on various types of products sold in the EU, such as toys and electronic equipment. The CE mark indicates that the product is manufactured according to the applicable EU legislation for that product type. So, a CE IVD is an IVD for which all requirements dictated by the applicable EU legislation are fulfilled. The main focus of the new legislation, the IVDR, is still on CE IVDs. However, the IVDR also dictates requirements for in-house devices used by diagnostic laboratories, which are also known as Laboratory Developed Tests, LDTs. This means that for the first time, EU legislation on IVDs becomes relevant for diagnostic labs that use in-house devices, as they will have to comply with the IVDR requirements. The IVDR already entered into force in 2017. The date of full application is the 26th of May 2022. On this date, the IVDD does not apply anymore, and all manufacturers, labs and everyone else involved will have to work with only a few exceptions according to the IVDR.